transitioning just from the uh, previous plenary talk. So we'll, we'll give it one more meeting, one more minute before we get started here. Okay, let's go ahead and get started, everyone. Um, so we're uh, near the end here of our symposium. I think it's been a fantastic set of talks, plenaries, keynotes, and things like that. Um, so with this uh, closing session, uh, we essentially wanna do two things. We have some awards that we wanna give out, and uh, then we have a few closing remarks. Uh, so without further ado, um, I would like to introduce two people. Uh, so first off is Kanuk Boribun Sumsin. So Kanuk is the um, uh, main conduit of the CAR T uh, Transportation Center here at UC Riverside. And then also want to introduce uh, Tara Romani, who's also been very deeply involved in all the CAR T activities. So uh, Kanuk and Tara, please take it away. Thank you, Matt. And as Matt mentioned, uh, we have student awards to give out. Um, so as, as one of the university transportation centers, um, our core mission is to advance transportation research and education. And, and so involving students in research project is uh, very important to us. And uh, in recognizing students' contribution and achievements, I would like to give a shout out to all the students who present their work and participate in this symposium over the last few days. Uh, I'm really impressed by the quality of the research that the students uh, have done around topics of transportation, air quality, and health. Um, now we have two awards. Uh, one is for uh, best oral presentation, and the other is for um, best poster presentation. And I'm pleased to announce the winner of the best oral presentation award. Uh, is uh, Chi Lee from University of California, Riverside for his presentation on investigating health effects of various particulate matter on mice by using animal exposure chambers. Congratulations, Chi. And next, uh, I would like to turn the stage over to Tara to announce the winner of the best poster presentation. Thank you, Kanok. And yes, like Kanok said, I do want to say that it was really heartening to see the amount of excellent presentations from students. Um, it is unfortunate that we are virtual and so we cannot actually hand these awards to you. But for the winners, um, please uh, know that we will be following up and sending you a certificate as well as a cash prize um, for winning this award. So. I'm very pleased to announce the winner of the best student presentation for the poster session of the lightning talk. And the winner is Hong Yu Lu of Georgia Tech um, for his presentation on evaluating population exposure to traffic related air pollution by demographic characteristics using activity based models. So um, this was an excellent presentation and it was a very close contest. So. Congratulations to both of our winners. Um, again, uh, a round of applause for Hong Yu as well. And um, we will be in touch to make sure that your awards get to you in due course. Thanks, everyone. Great. All right. Well, thank you very much, Kanuk and Tara. Um, and so what uh, we would like to, what I would like to do now is uh, invite, invite back uh, Joe Zietzman. So Joe, you want to come on, turn on your camera. 
And uh, Joe just led a very uh, interesting uh, plenary session. So he was just uh, doing quite a bit there. But Joe, why don't you say a few words, just sort of concluding um, where we are with the symposium. Thank you, Matt. Um, I appreciate that. Yes, my head is still full of very good information from that previous plenary, and I'll share a little bit of that. But um, I want to start out by, again, thanking folks that worked very, very hard. As you know, with a virtual event, um, it's always very interesting what can potentially go wrong. And as you expect, it wouldn't have been a virtual event if we didn't have a few glitches here and there. And thank you for all your patience to work through that and, and stick stick with us till the end and, and, and having patience to get back into the sessions, etc. I want to really thank uh, Jill Barber, um, Haley Young and Hanin Kreis for all their hard work on, um, on the spot and, and, and helping us through and navigating us through some of these glitches and all the planning work in advance. So that's the first comment I'd like to share. And then um, I also heard quite a bit from folks, uh, comments here and there, and, and a couple of notes to me that um, people really want to have this event again. And the next time they wanted to have it in person. So I will definitely pull together the university leads of CARTI and we will brainstorm um, time and place. And um, I think I'm pretty confident 2022 will be the year, maybe later in 22. I'll talk to Matt about this after the symposium. And I think we'll be ready to, to look at a, a new date and a, and a venue. Uh, then obviously I need to um, acknowledge the sponsors one more time, 3.x Corporation, Sonoma Technologies, Air Alliance Houston, and California Fuel Cell Partnership um, for their generous sponsorships. And um, we really appreciate that and their partnership. Finally, Matt, uh, just a few key takeaways, if you if you don't mind. And I'll also like to hear your reflections. And uh, you and I didn't compare notes. so um, And I was jotting down some notes uh, during the previous session because I think a lot of rich topics came out of there. So broadly speaking, I see three key takeaways from where I was sitting. Um, firstly, the whole notion of why should we care? Um, that always comes up, big picture. Uh, vehicles are getting cleaner, um, air pollution levels in certain areas are definitely reducing. So um, folks would say, um, why, why are we focused on cleaning the air and um, reducing vehicle emissions? Uh, and why are we so focused on that? Um, and reflecting on that and, this, and thinking about what I heard during the um, discussions, the keynote, as well as uh, the plenary discussions and some of the other presentations, we are still above acceptable levels in, in many areas. So firstly, we are not out of the woods. And um, a big health risk for the future is going to be climate change. So let's not underestimate what we're facing, not right now, even right now, but into the future. So climate change is definitely linked to a lot of the work that we're doing in car -T and that we've been talking about during um, the symposium. The second issue is that um, we have traditionally always been focused very much at the aggregate level, the regional level. So we can say regional air pollution is improving and that's great. The monitors are telling us a good story. But if you really drill down at the disaggregate level, at the community level and seeing where people are really exposed and especially certain, certain population groups, um, it tells a different story. So um, no, we're not out of the woods and we are really need to focus on that. So if we zoom into communities, looking at that in, 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 in a great deal of detail, um, we, we take a step back and we say, no, we've got a lot of work to do. And um, it reminds me of a quote by Admiral um, Brett Chua, who um, was the Assistant Secretary for Health. And he always says that um, zip code matters more than genetic code when it comes to health outcomes. And that comment um, drives home very, very strongly when we think about where people live and in terms of what they are exposed to and what are their health outcomes, especially in regards to air pollution. And that brings up the whole issue of equity. And I'm obviously not going to talk about that right now in my brief remarks, but it came, it was kind of a thread right through the symposium, equity and where people live and um, environmental justice, all those issues really drove home in terms of um, what we heard from the different sessions. And then finally, under this whole, why should we care? Um, we need to navigate this big infrastructure investments and um, including changes such as electrification. How do we do it um, that it works out well and it works out equitable? So 
that was my first takeaway. Why should we care? The, the second one, what I heard was regarding stakeholders. And it was really um, mind blowing to me how much and how many groups are involved when you really look at the issues we're talking about from the keynote address. Um, we heard about all the different um, groups involved in not only making the decisions, but making it happen, being involved in, in, in coming up with the plan. So um, there's so many groups on the public and the private sector that need to be worked with um, as we get through through these issues. On the research side, um, I have to say with car it's been pretty clear that we need planners, we need health professionals, we need medical doctors, we need civil engineers, transportation professionals, mechanical engineers, chemical engineers. So on the research side, it's been very clear. It's, it's, it's a lot different from 30 years ago when I started my career and everything was very narrow. Now it's broad. We need all these broad experiences and expertise. And then finally, on the community level, um, another issue that I learned very strongly uh, during the plenary session yesterday on community air quality and health. Um, community participation is a different animal now than what we knew five, 10 years ago. The community now is very sophisticated. They, they've got opinions and they want to be part of the decision making process and part of the solution. Um, for a long while, it almost felt like we come up with plans and we show it to the community and we move forward. The community is a lot more sophisticated from, from the way it's operating now and also from the presentations I heard. Um, they want to be part of the solutions. They, um, they don't only want to see a band-aid. For example, don't just add a filtration system. Let's go back to the source and fix that. Um, so those are the kind of inputs we're beginning to get from the community, which is very powerful and very strong. So my second point then on the stakeholders, much broader than we initially thought. And finally, um, I want to just touch on behavior. And um, behavior is, um, in my long career as a transportation professional, it's not easy to change. Um, you don't get people to change their behavior very easily. We just had this session, Alberto was talking about post COVID, how people are going to behave after COVID. And um, we're hoping for a hybrid system. Folks will be staying at home as much as they can, working from home, using the new technologies, travel less, maybe um, think more about doing single occupant vehicle commutes. Let's hope that's the case. Let's hope uh, people don't um, feel now COVID is going to be over. Let's have the euphoria of doing the things we used to be doing and doing it even three or four times more just because we can. So that's a tough one. And um, we, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. And related to behavior is obviously the whole issue of VMT, vehicle miles of travel. And that is the big lever, the, the, the elephant in the room, some people might call it. VMT is the one that can really impact these outcomes we're looking for. So let's hope we can um, touch on that and we can get some traction and impact on that. So finally, um, on behalf of CARTI, um, I just want to thank everybody for your participation and um, your contributions. Um, a lot of people worked very hard and the, the presenters did excellent jobs. As Matt said, um, we heard some fantastic presentations, great discussions, and we look forward to the next symposium and please stay in touch and um, you know where to find the, myself and the CAR-T colleagues, and we'd love to continue to collaborate and work together. Thank you, Matt, over to you. Great, thank you, Joe, for those remarks. And, you know, Joe, I had a lot of similar thoughts of what you just said in terms of the conference and the, and the takeaway. And, you know, conferences like these, for me, it's like drinking from a fire hose, right? I mean, we're hearing a lot of great stuff. You know, I made a lot of notes about, you know, to follow up on certain talks and certain presentations. So. Uh, this is some really good material. Um, you know, my my key things were very similar, Joe, where, you know, before we always looked at air quality, you know, primarily from a modeling perspective and and, and kind of like a, a regional level. But we've heard many times throughout the conference uh, that, you know, it's it's obviously not just this macro scale regional, you got to focus in on the micro scale and, you know, the, uh, the community impacts, right? It, it matters a lot in terms of uh, not just the emission sources, but the uh, uh, the exposure to the community. So that's that's a very important aspect, and being very nimble to be uh, be able to go between these larger regional 
effects and policies, and then also include the uh, sort of localized uh, policies as well. So that's that's a very important part, which which we should continue to expand on. Um, and then, Joe, you also mentioned climate change. So climate change and air quality, almost all the time, those things go together. But occasionally those things, there's some trade-offs there in terms of you know, how we should deal with uh, climate change and, and greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, but we can't forget, obviously, about the, uh, the air quality issues. And that's an important part um, that we have to consider. Um, the, the other thing is, you know, again, um, really enjoyed the keynote. Uh, very, very happy to have uh, the new uh, California Air Resources Board Chair, Leon Randolph. Um, and so, you know, what I really like to see, and I think we're seeing it already, is that we're all pulling in the same direction, right? So before, I think there was some contention between where we're headed from a federal federal perspective. Now it seems like all of us, um, not just the California, United States, but all the different uh, partners to this are pulling in the same direction. So I think that's a very important aspect of all this. Um, so very good conference. I definitely think we should be uh, continuing this. I think there's a, a lot of great value and, and we heard a lot of good remarks. Um, so like Joe, I, I want to thank uh, a few people. Uh, of course, the participants, the speakers, the presenters, they were all great talks. Um, and as Joe mentioned, we had a little bit of a hiccup yesterday with the uh, lightning talks and the, and the posters. But everyone, please keep in mind that all of these were recorded. Uh, all of us have access to this for 30 days. So please go back and take a look at those presentations and um, be, uh, be sure to visit that. Um, then, uh, of course, all the plenary organization, the plenary speakers, they were all great. I want to also um, uh, thank the, uh, the session moderators, right? So we had uh, Kirsten, Wei Wa, we had John Hall, Hao Bing, Kanuk, Hanin, Katie, uh, Mary, Anne. Uh, Vernon did a great job with the plenary talk, and then Joe, of course, and Ben uh, Edelman with the uh, lightning talk. So thank you guys for being the session moderators on that. That was very well done. And as Joe mentioned, a great team of organizers, um, you know, from uh, Texas Transportation Institute. We have Joe, Hanin, Kristen, Tara, Mary, Stephanie, and Haley. And then uh, from the UC Riverside perspective, thank you very much to Jill Barber, and Nicole Cleary that also helped out with this. So um, again, guys, great uh, symposium. Let's do it again. And um, I think we can conclude at this time. So thanks everyone. Um, I think we can say we're adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>